part 4 of the series of videos about developing a class B audio amplifier. This is the final schematic. I made some minor changes, though important changes in my opinion. Uh, here again the circuit on that piece of wood made with brass nails and like I told uh, I don't like very critical setups of audio amplifiers uh, because often when they are made in a critical way so that all the components have to be in a precise position or the input has to be shielded they often have a tendency to oscillate and all these special positions of the components um, uh, try to avoid that situation. Anyway, this is the circuit and I think it is okay now. At first I want to show the complete schematic. There are a few changes. At first, of course, the fuse here. I tested the circuit over and over, overdriven. Uh, I found that maximum approximately 3.5 ampere can flow. So you need a fuse um, for, say, the situation that the current gets too high and especially when the end transistors burn out. I'm sure they will surely not burn out quickly because there is a quite big heat sink. So that's an important advice. Use a good heat sink here and a good heat sink here. The second uh, adaptation was that I uh, changed here the uh, small potentiometers and made it fixed value resistors 470k. 470,000 ohms, that was the best value. A very important uh, thing was that the uh, whole amplifier had a tendency to oscillate and that could be cured with this uh, capacitor here, it's 10 nanofarad. So 10 nanofarad here, 470k here, 470k here, I will talk about this later. This is a kind of coarse way uh, uh, for shortcut protection anyway. This is an also important. The first resistor here was 680 ohms. But when you drop that, uh, that um, value somewhat down by bridging it with two 1K resistors, you get a somewhat higher quiescent current. And that means that the <coughs> waveform, the sine wave, is better um, undistorted. It's more or less completely uh, undistorted at the moment. I will show it. This is always important. 10 microfarad, 100K, 100N, say 100 volt capacitor. And this, for instance, 63 volt. This is non-polar, of course. And well, that were the most important things to tell. This capacitor uh, acts against high frequency oscillations. This also, like I told, here are the pink connections. And the whole circuit works properly, has a good frequency bandwidth between 20 Hz and 20 kHz. I will also demonstrate that. And well, about the uh, uh, shortcut protection. I did it or you can use it or you cannot use it but when you want to use this very simple setup you can use uh, automotive lamp 12 volt uh, 60 watt the so-called H4 lamp and important so this lamp shortcut protection so when the loudspeaker is shortcut, this uh, lamp gets into action because it will start to light up. It will start to burn and that means that your end transistors cannot burn out easily. 
Though the whole circuit was very stable, I tested it over and over. Uh, I've put a piece of cloth over these two and transistors, let the whole um, heat sinks warm up to approximately uh, 45 degrees Celsius. And there was absolutely no instability. And thus that also means that there is no reason for um, a kind of circuit that um, limits the current through the end transistors when the end transistors get very hot. I've also put a box over the two end transistors so that the, the heatsink couldn't work properly. Anyway, this is again important, so let's listen. Well, I was talking about the shortcut protection, so let's go back, somewhat back. These two filaments of that lamp, you can put them in parallel, and you do that here, in this way. That means that you have a kind of very, very low resistor that precedes uh, the loudspeaker or the loudspeakers. And when the loudspeaker is shortcut, the lamp will, uh, say, dissipate the energy. So here is the, here is how to do that. One electrode of the lamp, the other electrode, and say the top electrode here. And when you solder it this way, you have a protective resistor. Let's listen. Say that had to do with my very old homemade loudspeaker box. The speakers are perhaps 25 years old or so. Anyway, the scope shows no distortion. That's enough. Let's see what the um, signal, sine wave signal generator can bring us. I have to, of course, connect that at first. This is, by the way, the healthy sound of, a, of a, such an amplifier. And the signal generator is here. So now you hear nothing, but I, the signal is now sine wave of approximately not approximately, of 20 kilohertz. This is the sine wave. 20 kilohertz. Of course, uh, when I lift up the, the level, input level, it goes to a, well, quite good. Of course, it goes to a square wave. On a high input level, every audio amplifier has a, uh, that say effect behavior that you cannot overdrive an audio amplifier. And now we go to one step lower, that is 2K, 2000 Hertz. Two hundred hertz. And twenty hertz. Of course nothing is ideal in life, but 
I think the whole amplifier amplified properly. Now we go to 50 Hz. 50 Hz. 500 Hz. Five thousand hertz, fifty thousand hertz. So I think the distortion is okay given the whole setup of this amplifier. I don't have, uh, say, um, a measuring device with which I can um, measure the distortion, and I don't do that. Uh, and there's also one of the reasons is. Uh, that uh, an amplifier must sound pleasant. So, I want to finally show the schematic again, but of course we need some music in that case. And by the way, the circuit works best on 40 volts, 35 volts or 40 volts. It takes in an emergency situation 1.5 ampere. In a shortcut situation it can take approximately 2.5 up to 3 ampere. And of course you don't need strictly uh, the say overload protection, these say uh, automotive lamp that does that protection job. When a loudspeaker is connected, few loudspeakers are connected, uh, there is of course no reason for a destructive shortcut of this amplifier. Pen over somewhat finally to give the details. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the circuit when you make it. The bass frequencies are also very good.